guys welcome to another video and um, today I am talking about how to fit backpacks so I've got a variety here I um, didn't realize that my backpacks had a color palette until I laid them out like this but yeah so today I'm looking at the kind of couple of key um, things to consider when fishing and packing your backpack so that's going to be most comfortable it can be for you be it a day hike or a through hike or anything in between okay so to quickly run through the bags that i have this is a low alpine uh, air zone at around 20 liters this is a low alpine in the 33 to 40 liter range and this is an osprey bag in the 65 liter range so for me personally i use this one for day hikes I use this bag for sometimes winter day hikes where I need to have way more gear and layers with me or for easy multi-day hikes. So if I was going on a multi-day hike but I didn't need to bring a tent and a sleeping bag and a stove and kind of all of the things. If I was, let's say, going hostel to hostel or if it's summertime and I need less gear. And then finally, the uh, Osprey um, Aura, the 65 liter one on the end, that is the one that was my favorite bag during our like Waymark Trails Tough Souls project. So that bag is 65 liters and never once in that whole project did I have the bag bursting to its seams. But what it was really, really good at was dealing with the weight that I had in it. So just because um, I didn't necessarily need all the volume. I needed the kind of frame that it had to deal with the dense, heavy items I had in my backpack. Which kind of leads us nicely onto frames. All three of these bags have a back frame. Um, these two are quite similar. The Astri one is a bit different. Um, but the idea is the bag isn't sitting directly on your back so that when you're sweating, it's not soaking into the bag or there's a little bit of airflow there to kind of help wick the moisture away um, and also if there's any lumps in your bag it's not necessarily poking you in the back which can be really uncomfortable. When I talk about the litres of a backpack I'm talking about the internal volume. Now every company has their own way of measuring it so a 20 litre low alpine bag is not going to be the exact same as a 20 litre Dorsher bag or a 20 litre Osprey bag or whatever brand you're comparing it to. They're all slightly different, but the idea is that within the bag, it has the volume of 20 litres worth of storage space. How you kind of get your head around that as, uh, as volume is, is kind of tricky. Uh, it's just something that you kind of get used to as you look at different bags and as you pack things into them. Uh, yeah, but the litres of a bag basically means the, the volume of space inside it. Okay, so when you're fishing a bag to you, the most important thing is the length of the back of the bag and the length of your back. So our skeletons are kind of designed that your hips carry quite a bit of weight. They have your whole upper body sitting on them and then your legs carry your upper body around. So your hips are kind of made to deal with the weight of your upper body. Your shoulders are not really made for dealing with weight. So for me, if I'm doing anything more than a very light, easy day hike, I like a backpack that has hip straps. And so these hip straps, you want them to be hugging your kind of hip bones. So for me, the top of my kind of hips is about here. So which is a little higher than you'd think. You see that, like, at first I thought I was just kind of wear it here, which is kind of, I think, where the, like, there is a pointy part of my hips here, but the kind of top of them is here. So for me, I want my bag to cinch and sit here, so the weight is sitting on my hips and not dragging my shoulders. So if I take this one. Okay, so I can lengthen the hip strap to get it on right. So yeah, about here. And then I like to tighten it on my hips so it sits there. And then 
for the back part of my bag, for this shoulder strap, you want it to go with the curve of your back. So if my bag is too high and it's up like this, you can see the shoulder strap is above my shoulder. And so it's kind of, it's too tall, it's too long for my back. So if I kind of put that back into position, like this. So yeah, right now the length of the back of my bag is the same length as my back. The strap comes over and around my shoulder, but the hips are really what's kind of holding the weight of the bag. So this is just kind of keeping position, and this chest strap is the strap that's kind of sliding back off my shoulders. But your, your these straps shouldn't be super tight. They're obviously going to be holding some of the weight, but you want the majority of the weight to be on your hips. Now. This bag is the correct length for my back because it has adjustable straps here. And I have it set to the smallest setting because I am quite a short person. I'm five foot two. Also, just because somebody is tall doesn't mean their back length is necessarily long. So when I say that my kind of hip bones are here, you know, I've known guys to have super high hip bones and even though they're quite tall, all their length is in their legs. <laughs> so when they put on a bag, if they put on the like large on the long setting, it's actually way too big on them. For me, I have a pretty standard sized back for a woman, but I have short legs, <laughs> which is what makes me short. Um, so while I always end up going for the smaller size bags, I don't need them always on the smallest setting. So that's a really important uh, factor to think about when you're sizing your bags. So all of these parts are adjustable. So on the top of the bag here, there's a strap that attaches to the top of the bag and to the shoulder strap. And this one is to kind of keep the bag upright. You don't want it kind of falling backwards off your back. And this becomes apparent, or you can really, really feel this um, if you have your bag packed badly as well. So to kind of have your bag balanced nicely on your back, you want the kind of heaviest items to really be in the center of your bag to have it as balanced as possible. Having them kind of towards the bottom is okay as well, but the last place you want is to have a top heavy bag, which kind of like swings all over the place or pulls back on you. So kind of center to like lower section of the bag is where you want the weight of your bag to be. And also, if you look at the side of all three bags, they're going to have cinching straps. So like this guy here, and this one down here, this here. And on this bag, my flower is on it. It's this one here. And also this big blue one down here. So when your bag is packed, you tighten in the, these kind of cinching straps to kind of keep it compact and so that it's not moving around too much either. So the frame of this Osprey bag is a bit different. It has this really kind of wide hugging hip strap. And initially, the first time I tried it on, it felt really weird. But for me, this does an amazing job of dealing with weight. In this um, light blue low alpine bag, I wouldn't be going over 12 kilos. Anything over that and the whole bag just feels like it's kind of struggling. Whereas this bag, I've probably had close to 20 kilos in it and I've been fine. Again, we have this back section um, set to kind of a medium, actually. Um, this is a the small size. So this comes in a small. This one's also the small or the women's um, fish. A lot of the brands are kind of moving away from men's and women's fish because not all women are under 5'5 five five and not all men are over 5'10. So <laughs> it's, um, and they're going for more kind of small and large. Um, sizing as opposed to like men's and women's um, explicitly anyway. There you go, this one on. I have my hip straps on my hips. And then I can wiggle into shoulders this one. Like I said, this, um, yeah, this is a bit of a different design, but I really, really love it. Um, 
the whole bag, like right now I could take the shoulder straps off and the whole thing feels like it's suspended from my hips. Um, this deals with weight really, really well. So again, I have the shoulder strap hugging the kind of curve of my shoulder. None of the weight is on my shoulders. All the weight should be on your hips. Very simple process, but really, really important. Um, at the moment, in all of these bags, I just have jumpers, jackets, and some blankets to kind of fill them out and to make them look like what they would look like when I'm wearing them. If you're buying a bag, I'd really recommend putting some weights in. So maybe put a, uh, a blanket or two in the bottom to kind of fill it out a bit, and then put a couple of bags of pasta. Well, they're not quite heavy. A couple of bags of rice in, so a few kilos in it to kind of feel how it moves and how it actually sits on your shoulders and on your hips. I know many people say that the weight of a backpack shouldn't exceed 20% uh, of your body weight, which for a guy who weighs 80 kilos um, means that he has 16 um, kilos of backpack to play with, which is a lot more generous than what um, women are often <laughs> um, given. So if you weigh 60 kilos, um, the max that they recommend on this scale is 12 which can be really 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 hard to uh, hit um, which is why for me having a bag that um, can comfortably deal with weight is really important and why fitting the bag really well is important because I regularly go over that 20% limit. Um, it does mean that life is hard um, but not insurmountably so and it takes a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of uh, practice, but this is uh, the cards you're dealt. Uh, unless you have the most ultralight hiking gear and have the money to spend on the most ultralight hiking gear, it's kind of the, the catch-22. Um, when people are getting into hiking, uh, I never want to tell them that they need to spend a lot of money to get outdoors, because you don't, you really don't. Um, however, the more money you spend on equipment, the lighter it is, or the, the better it is at that activity, possibly, and therefore the better time you might have. Um, yeah, so it's a balancing act. Uh, but 20% is the kind of generally thrown about uh, weight percentage that your bag shouldn't exceed for you. Do with it what you will, do your best. That's all you can really ask for. Something that I have noticed in the past is that the bigger a bag you buy, the more stuff you'll take with you. Quite often for a multi-day hike, having a bag that doesn't go over 40 litres can be really useful because it makes you be more brutal with your gear choices and means that your weight on your bag isn't going to be more than you can actually handle. This 65 litre um, bag I absolutely love and thankfully I have the experience to never fill the bag. The last thing you want is to kind of bring the kitchen sink with you as you're weighing yourself down and having an uncomfortable time. Having your backpack sitting right makes the world a difference. Less shoulder pain, um, less back pain, not unavoidable. We, Carl and myself, every time we restart um, kind of multi-day hiking, there is a period of kind of all of our joints and muscles getting used to the feeling again. But having it fit right definitely makes a huge difference. So as I said, weight on your hips. Your shoulder straps are just to be holding it uh, in place, not necessarily taking the weight out of the bag. You want to keep the main weight of your bag in the lower half, roughly in the middle of the bag, to keep it nice and secure on you and so you're not top heavy and falling all, all over the place. And make sure that all of the small straps are tensioned and that you've tried them out to see exactly how changing them feels when you're hiking. Because bags do have a lot of straps, um, but there's a reason for most of them. So tightening some, loosening some, and going for a bit of a walk is a really uh, interesting experience to see how the bag suddenly feels different as you're moving. Most backpacks, while water resistant, are not waterproof. As I mentioned in what I carry in a day bag, 
I would always make sure to put the stuff in my bag, into dry bags, or and to have rain covers for the bag because the fabric they're made out of is very durable and is quite water resistant. But being in Ireland, when you're out for a day in the rain, your stuff is still going to get wet. As always, at the end of our videos, we say a huge thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon. It's through their support that we can keep making videos. And this week, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Declan Jennings, to Mags Terrell, and to Glenn and Donna Jackson. I hope you all have an amazing week and amazing hiking adventures in 2022. And I'll see you in our next video. Falling over trying to fix the focus.